14th lecture <coughs> and we are going to do mid band analysis of FEQ amplifiers. So far we have been concerned with BJT and BJT we <coughs> discussed the CE connection, the CB connection common base and the CC connection common collector or the emitter follower. And we shall see that FET amplifiers are very similar in analysis and performance <coughs> characteristics. For example, CE is comparable to common source CS, emitter terminal is comparable to the source terminal, common base is comparable to CG, common gate and common collector is comparable to common drain. Now what are these characteristics? If I take the voltage gain AV, <coughs> that is the same for CE and CB, that is GM minus, no, there is a difference, there is a difference of phase. In CE there is an inversion, in CB there is no inversion, but the gain magnitude is the same GM, GM times RL parallel RC, okay. <coughs> However, if CE is unbypassed RE, CE with unbypassed RE, then the gain drops down drastically, agreed? With unbypassed emitter resistance, the gain drops down drastically. <coughs> Whereas for CC, AV, the voltage gain is less than 1, but very close to unity, very close to unity. These characteristics as you shall see will be the same if E is substituted by S, B is substituted by G <coughs> in the case of the FET amplifier. As far as the, <coughs> the input resistance is concerned, the lowest input resistance is for which connection? CB common base connection, it is the lowest. For CE, it is moderate and CE with RE unbypassed. How do I indicate this? Let us put CE equal to 0. That indicates that RE is unbypassed and CC, the input resistance is very high. It is of the order of R pi plus beta plus 1 times R E. The current gain, current gain is high for C E and C C, but it is less than 1 for common base C B. <coughs> as far as R 0 is concerned, which As far as R0 is concerned, which configuration has the lowest R0? Collector. Common collector. And the R0 is of the order of 1 over GM. For the other two configurations, they are approximately equal to <laughs> R sub, yes? C. For CE and CB. And whatever we have said so far about common emitter also applies to common source, common base also applies to common gate and common collector also applies to common drain. <coughs> of the three configurations, the most generally used configuration is the common emitter. Common emitter is a general purpose configuration because it has moderate voltage gain, moderate current gain, its input impedance is neither very large nor very low, output impedance is of the order of R sub C, so it is at your choice. This is the most commonly used. In FET, in FET it would be the common source, okay, most commonly used. <coughs> now there are two special uses of the common base, one special use for common base, one special use for common collector. 
what is used for common base? If you are driving, if your signal source is high impedance, then you apply it to a common base because the input impedance is low. <coughs> On the other hand, if your signal source, if your signal source has high impedance, V S R S, okay, then you apply to a common base so that it is a current drive basically. A source having high impedance is a current source, okay, more than a voltage source. So it is apt to apply a common base circuit whereas a common collector circuit is used where the source is a voltage source that is the input impedance is low, okay. <coughs> and the common collector circuit the other use is that it acts as a buffer from a high impedance source to a low impedance load, okay. In the, <coughs> in the tutorial class <coughs> today this, during this week there is a problem of there is a problem that is given for matching a source to a load all right. The source impedance is 1000 ohms and the load impedance is 50 ohms. Obviously if we connect this directly <coughs> if we connect the source to the load directly there is heavy mismatch. So if you want to deliver maximum power to the load then what you do is you insert an amplifier in between such that the input impedance is 1000 ohms and the output impedance is 50 ohms, okay. So this is the problem of matching and an amplifier can very well fit the purpose. The problem you shall do <coughs> yourself. <coughs> now let us take an FET amplifier. The basic equivalent circuit, AC equivalent circuit that we shall use for an FET, this is the gate, this is the drain, this is the source. The basic equivalent circuit would be the gate is open, this is the source, this voltage is VGS. VGS the phasor voltage and then you have a current generator GM times VGS, GM times VGS and it is paralleled by a dynamic drain resistance R sub D which occurs due to non-parallel nature of the characteristics with respect to the voltage axis. If you draw the FET characteristics, these are not perfectly parallel but they are slightly inclined and this slight inclination in the BJT, this was called early effect in the FET, there is no special name for it but there is a voltage comparable to the early voltage and for reasons to be made clear in another course, this is denoted by lambda inverse. Okay, lambda inverse is comparable CF V sub A, the early voltage in BJT. It is for peculiar reasons, it is called lambda inverse. Okay, and R sub D, you can find from the characteristics, you find the slope, okay, that is, you extend this on the negative axis and find out where it cuts, then that voltage divided by the current, well. You can do it that way or if lambda inverse is given then R sub D is given by lambda inverse divided by I sub D, the drain current. In the previous case it was VA divided by I sub C, okay. It is very comparable, very much comparable. RD is the dynamic drain resistance. As far as GM is concerned, GM can no longer be calculated by a simple formula like the one that you had used that is I sub C divided by 26, no, no longer that because your drain current I sub D is not a linear relationship, it is a relationship like this, it is a square law 1 minus <coughs> VGS divided by VP whole squared where VP will be replaced by VT if it is an enhancement mode MOS FET and GM has to be found out as DID 
d v g s at the operating point at the operating point and you can see that this is twice i d s s divided by minus v p times 1 minus v g s divided by v p. Do you notice that I have changed the total voltage to the DC voltage because you shall have to find this g m at the operating point and every time you shall have to find this therefore for the transistor that is specified you must be given v p the pinch of voltage or v t the threshold voltage. We shall see how these are calculated when you take an example. Now <coughs> the analysis is very routine and very similar to what we have done for BJT. So we will go a little um, hurriedly, not quite hurriedly, we will miss, we will we'll, we'll omit some of the algebraic steps. Okay. I will simply say this is how the equation is written and you simplify and find out the result. All right. This, you, but as far as you are concerned, I suggest that you, you do it yourself very carefully. First, a common source amplifier. You have a VDD and the usual story R sub D, you have the, <coughs> I am drawing the, J, I am drawing the FET always as a JFET, but it should be clear that the same circuit applies to MOS FET also, only the symbol shall differ. Okay, I'll for simplicity I'll draw it like this. Okay, uh, <coughs> this is the source, and the source, as you know, is connected for biasing reasons, is connected to a, sig a resistance R sigma, and you know why sigma was used because R S is reserved for source resistance. All right, and as usual, R sigma has to be bypassed by a C sigma. All right has to be bypassed. The output is taken from the drain through a coupling capacitor C2 and you go to a load RL. The voltage across RL is the output voltage V0 and the current in RL is the output current I0. As far as the, <coughs> the what, uh, what is the nature of the channel for the FET that I have drawn? N channel. Therefore, what I need is a biasing through R1 and R2, the usual story. However, I want VGS to be positive or negative? Negative. 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 I want VGS to be negative, therefore VG must be less than VS. All right. We will see how this is done. Then you have the coupling capacitor C1 and the source RS and the source voltage Vs once again it is the phasor. <coughs> this is the common <coughs> common source FET amplifier. All right. The equivalent circuit AC equivalent circuit can be drawn step by step. You start with RS Vs C1 is a short R1 and R2 in parallel shall give you a resistance of we call this Rg. Rg is equal to R1 parallel R2 okay. and the gate is now open all right. The gate is now open. The source is shorted to ground as far as AC is concerned the short source is shorted to ground. So the only other terminal that you need is the drain and the drain has a, <coughs> as a current generator GM VGS no I should write small g small s VGS is this voltage. which is also equal to V i in our usual terminology. The actual voltage that is applied to the gate between the gate and ground. Okay. So V i is equal to V g s, G m V g s. Then we have the drain dynamic drain resistance R sub d and the two resistances capital R d and capital R l. It is this voltage which is the output voltage and the current through RL is the output current I0. 
it is very easy to see that the gain because Vgs is the same as Vi, V0 by Vi shall be simply minus Gm because this current does not agree with voltage times Rd parallel Rd parallel RL. That is it, very simple, the voltage gain. <coughs> and usually small Rd is a very large quantity small Rd is a very large quantity and therefore the gain is approximately approximately minus Gm Rd parallel Rl. If you so desire you can denote this resistance by Rl prime as we did in the BJT case. <coughs> also looking at the circuit itself you can see <coughs> that the input resistance Ri is simply equal to Rg no complication, no R pi, no R x, no, no forward feedback. So, R i equal to R g and what about R 0? If you look from here, if you look from here, it is simply the parallel combination of R d parallel R d because the current generator is a 0 current generator and it has internal impedance of infinity. 0 because V s is 0 then V i shall be equal to 0. All right. And therefore, we have found out the gain and the two impedances by inspection. The only thing that remains to find out is A i which is the current gain is given by A v times R i by R l and it is very easy to see what this expression would be. This would be equal to <coughs> would be equal to minus Gm Rd Rg divided by Rd plus Rg. Is that correct? Rl, that is correct. <coughs> this should be Rl. No. Numerator RL cancels out because oh this is AI I beg your pardon this is AI now it is correct fine it's okay we take an example see analysis is very simple it's much simpler than BJT why because the gate is isolated from the source and the drain. Okay, gate is gate does not have a, a forward feedback path. So the analysis is very simple, and it can be done by inspection. Let's take an example. <coughs> we have a common source FET amplifier with please please look at this carefully. IDSS. The calculations are a little complicated, uh, more involved than BJT because uh, of the trouble of finding GM. Okay. And because VGS is VG minus VS, you have to make sure that VGS is negative, you have to make sure that VDS is greater than, greater than VGS plus VP, minus or plus? <coughs> minus. minus VP, all right. So you have to make all these things sure, <coughs> otherwise the transistor will not work as an amplifier. All these checks were not needed. As long as a Q point is found out in a BJT, a Q point which is reasonably good Q point, you have to you have you have to worry about nothing else. In an FET, you do have to. Let us see. Uh, IDSS is 10 milliampere given. VP is given as minus 5 volt. VDD is 15 volt plus 15. R1 is 1 meg. R2 is 150k. And R sigma is equal to R D is equal to R L. All these three resistors are equal, and values 15 K. All right. The question is to find the Q point, and also the values of A V, R I, R zero, and A I. These are the things to be found out in the common source amplifier. Now the first thing we do is to find out the drain current, the Q point drain current and you know 
the drain current I sub D is I D S S that is 10 milliampere 1 minus V G S divided by V P. So, it will be 1 plus V G S divided by 5 whole squared milliampere. Is that clear? Because V P is minus 5, the sign has become positive. Okay. Also, <coughs> you see V G S is equal to Vg minus Vs. What is Vg? Vg is Vgg. Vg is Vgg minus R sigma times Id. Therefore, Vgs, what is Vgg? This is 15 <laughs> multiplied by R2 that is 150k divided by 1 meg plus 150k minus R sigma is 15 k times I D. Substitute this, substitute this here, then you get an equation in I D which is not a linear equation, which is a quadratic. And the equation after you clear the algebra and solve it, okay, I will skip all this arithmetic, you get I sub D equal to 0.4 milliampere. Now, a quadratic has two solutions, you must be careful in choosing the solution. The other solution will make the FET not operate in the linear region, all right. The other solution will not be acceptable. Therefore, VGS, if ID is 0.4 milliampere, you get VGS as 1.96 minus 15 K, this is VGG incidentally, which is also equal to VG. 15 K multiplied by 0.4 milliampere, this is 6 volt and therefore VGS is minus 4.04 volt. <coughs> and under this condition VDS is VDD that is 15 minus 0.4 milliampere multiplied by RD plus R sigma that means 30 K. I'll add 15 plus 15 and this comes out as 3 volt. 3 volt and 0.4 milliampere is the Q point. Finally, you have to check whether this VDS is greater than VGS minus VP. Obviously, it is so. Okay. All right. That you check yourself. Now, uh, the, the other thing that remains to be found out is GM and RD. It is given that lambda inverse for this, no RD is given, I will take a lambda inverse case later. RD is given as 100 K. How do you find GM? GM is twice IDSS divided by minus VP, then 1 minus VGS upon VP. Everything is known, you can substitute the values and get GM as equal to 0.8 millimole. Be careful in this calculation. <coughs> and then uh, once you have found this out, the other things are simply putting down in the formula or just looking at the circuit. You can write down the equation by looking at the circuit. AV would be minus GM that is 0.8 millimole parallel combination of 100 K, 15 K and 15 K, R D, R L, small r subscript small d and this comes out as minus 5.6. Low gain, R sub i which is R G is 1 meg parallel 150 K and this comes as 130 K. R0 would be, if you take small rd into account, 100k parallel 15k and this becomes 13k, all right. Now let us complicate matters. Is there any question on this? No. If I can proceed at this rate, we will be in good business. Yes. Yes. So, won't uh, that change the equation for ID, sir? Won't it consist uh, of RD also? 
No, I don't file. Small RD? Yes, sir. Small RD comes only in the AC equivalent circuit, not in the DC. Small RD comes only in the AC equivalent circuit. It does not affect the bias. <coughs> we next consider, we next complicate matters. Let us put C sigma equal to 0. That is an unbypassed, unbypassed <coughs> source resistance. Now what will be the? Yes. We have not found the current gain. We have not found the current gain. Oh, that is too bad. A sub i is A V that is minus 5.6 multiplied by R i. R i is 130 k <coughs> divided by R l is 15 k. <coughs> you calculate what this value is. Okay. So, let us consider a C s amplifier with C sigma equal to 0. And all that we have to do now is to draw the equivalent circuit carefully. And that solves the problem as you shall see. The equivalent circuit if we proceed in the usual manner V s R s then we shall have R g the same. Uh, same circuit, this is the gate. <coughs> then, since the source is not bypassed, we must include R sigma. Agreed? And this is the voltage which is V small g small s plus minus Vgs. No longer it is to ground. No longer Vgs equals to Vi. No. <coughs> Vgs is not equal to Vi. Agreed? Oh, one thing that I did not calculate was A V S, which you can very easily find out as A V multiplied by R I divided by R I plus R S. That is very simple. So, I do not have to repeat that. Let me go to only um, procedures which are new. Then from the drain to the source, we have G M V G S and to complicate matters, there is an RZ, RD. <coughs> we will see <coughs> what happens when RD is included, what happens when RD is not included. And uh, I find it convenient to leave all complicated matters to students. So, <coughs> including the effect of RD, I will ask you to calculate yourself. We will have occasion to, to look at this. And in this particular case, in this particular example that we took, RD cannot be ignored, as you shall see in a, in a moment. But we shall do it. We will we'll make a rough calculation. From the drain, then we have the two resistances. Oh, why did they change color? Two resistances, R sub D and R sub L. This is I0 and this voltage is V0. All right. Now you see, <coughs> look at the circuit. Uh, <coughs> it is said that if you can observe a problem carefully, half of it is solved. If you can observe this circuit carefully, the calculations will be very simple. GM VGS now no longer supplies only the parallel combination of RD and RL and small RD. Small RD is not in <laughs> parallel at all. So, this current source must supply two parallel paths. One is RD, small r subscript small d and the other is the parallel combination of RD, RL and series in series with R sigma. Okay. If you recognize this fact, <coughs> then the calculation including the effect of RD shall be simple, but we will find it convenient to ignore it. It supplies, you see across GM VGS there are two resistors, one is RD and the other is RD parallel RL plus R sigma, okay, because these points are the same, these points are the same, they are all ground. So, what I had is RD parallel RL plus R sigma. If you recognize, this is, the, this is the only single fact that has to be recognized to include the effect of RD. Now, can we ignore the effect of RD in this case? RD was given to be 100 K. 
the kernel combination of RD and RL is 7.5k and this is 15. So the parallel path is 22.5k, approximately one fifth of this part. So the current shall divide <coughs> into the same ratio, 1 is to 5. Is that clear? So how does GM, BGS divide current to RD? Oh, there is a current source, let me draw this, GM VGS which is in parallel with small RD. <coughs> okay, this point, then we have R sigma plus <coughs> RL prime. Therefore, this current has two parts, one is through this and the other is through this. Isn't that right? This current after coming here, where can it go? It has to flow like this and like this. Now, if this part was very low resistance as compared to small RD, we could have ignored small RD. But the current now divides into approximately 1 is to 5. All right, so we cannot ignore RD, but we will make our calculation including excluding RD and leave RD effect to you. So we assume that RD is much greater than <coughs> R sigma plus RD parallel RL. Okay? We assume, we derive our formula by assuming this. If that is so, <coughs> then you see, then you see that V0 is simply minus GM VGS multiplied by RD parallel RL. So all that request to be found out is VGS. Let us see what VGS is. <coughs> VGS is VG minus VS that is equal to VG is VI, right? VG is VI and VS is if we ignore small r subscript small d then GM VGS flows through R sigma. Therefore, it would be simply GM VGS multiplied by R sigma. Okay? This is an involved equation. VGS occurs on the right side and also on the left side. So, you can find out VGS as equal to VI divided by 1 plus GM R sigma. Agreed? This is how VGS has to be found out. And once VGS is found out, V0 is minus GM VGS RD parallel RL and therefore the voltage gain S of V shall be equal to minus GM RD parallel RL divided by 1 plus GM R sigma. What was GM in the previous example? 0.8 millimo and R sigma was 15 K. So this is 12. Is that right? 12 is much large, larger compared to 1. So approximately, approximately the gain would be, if GM R sigma is much greater than 1, then approximately the gain would be minus RD parallel RL divided by R sigma. You recall we had a similar formula in the case of a common emitter amplifier with unbypassed RE. The gain was approximately negative of the ratio of the effective load to RD. It's the same formula that applies here. Okay. <coughs> what is RI? Input resistance. It is still equal to R sub G. Agreed. And A sub I can be calculated as A V R I divided by R L in the usual manner. You can write the expression. <coughs> What is R0? If small rd is ignored, then R0 is simply capital R subscript capital D. But if it is not ignored, then complications arise. And you have to solve a, a circuit. Let me indicate this circuit. The solution would be left to you. What we have to do is, <coughs> we have an R sigma. <coughs> then GM VGS, okay, GM VGS, all right, parallel RD 
R D and there is a resistance capital R subscript capital D. You have to connect a voltage generator here and the current I0 has to be found out. R0 would now be equal to V0 by I0 all right. But what is VGS? Minus Vs, okay. And what is minus Vs? This is minus. What is the current flowing through this? No. V0. It is R sigma multiplied by what is the current? That is what I wanted to know. Rd by in terms of I0 V0, it is, is I0 minus V0 by Rd, that is correct, all right. So you know everything now in terms of I0 and V0 and therefore you can find out I V0 by I0. Is the point clear? No. All right, let me draw this resistance here Rd. Then this current must flow through the R sigma. This current after coming, this current is I0 minus V0 by Rd. Okay, this current, this current, this one. This current splits up into two parts one is to this, one is to this. They must combine here and flow through R sigma. Requires a little bit of thinking but it is not difficult. So you can find out V0 by I0 and I leave this to you. Whatever it is, whatever this current is, these two currents again combine here and flow through R sigma. Okay. Any question? Oh, this is what I have found out. Gm Vgs would be minus Gm R sigma times I0 minus V0 by Rd. Everything now in the circuit shall be in terms of I0 and V0. Which current source? Right. Why is it not contributing any current to the R sigma? Let me draw this circuit again. Now I shall draw in a different manner. This would be minus Gm R sigma I0 minus V0 by Rd. <coughs> there is an Rd here. This is V0 I0. And this goes to R sigma. All right. So whatever current comes here, whatever current comes here must flow here. There is no other way. And what is this current? This is simply V0 I0 minus V0 by Rd. This is what I have substituted for Vgs. Vgs is minus Rd minus R sigma multiplied by this current. Okay. Any other doubt? No, sir. I assure you this is correct. <laughs> Haven't made any mistake. Yes. Oh, sure. I have all the time in the world. You must give me a signal when you are through. We shall then consider the same example that we had considered for the CS amplifier which C sigma tends to what? The previous example tends to infinity, infinity that is R sigma short circuit. Okay. Can you have the formula for R No, I have not derived it therefore you have to derive it yourself. Consider the same example. What was the example? IDSS was 10 milliampere. VP is minus 5 volt. VDD is 15 volt. R1 is 1 meg. R2 150k. R sigma equal to RD equal to RL equal to 15k small rd if it is 100k then obviously all our calculations will be 
approximate. Okay. Nevertheless, I give you small r d and I ask you to find what modification is needed. We have already seen the modification. In the calculation of the output resistance, all that you have to do is to split this current G M V G S. That is about it. Okay. So, it should not be very difficult. Small r d is 100 k. If you calculate, will the DC, will the Q point change? No, because everything has remained the same. Q point does not change. If Q point does not change, G M does not change. G M is the same. G M is also then the same as 0.8 millimo and if you utilize these formulas then you get A V do not depend on formulas unnecessarily where you can see the formula see it rather than committing to memory okay. If you if you calculate it is simply minus G M the effective load divided by this divided by comes because C sigma is equal to 0 divided by 1 plus G M R six, <coughs> and that becomes minus 0 0.46 I will skip the arithmetic A sub I becomes minus 4 now you see A V the, the voltage gain now becomes less than 1 this is what the unbypassed emitter source resistance does to the amplifier the current gain is minus 4 R i and R 0 are not changed, they are the same as in the previous <coughs> case. <coughs> okay, done, let us take the common gate amplifier. You will see that the calculations are very similar, there is no, no difference except that you have to be a bit careful about the calculation of G m. and the output resistance it is the output resistance which is the which is the uh, complicated calculation now in a in a common gate amplifier cg which is equivalent to cb of bjt you have vs vs rs couple to a capacitor c1 2 <coughs> started on a wrong foot, so let us change the page. We have first let us draw the FET. This is the source, this is the gate and this is the drain. Now in order to bias this, in order to bias the source we require a resistance R sigma and we cannot bypass it now, we cannot bypass it. In order to put a gate voltage, we must have a resistance R sub 2 and we must supply it to the VDD. Okay. From the drain, we have the resistance RD, this is R1 and this should go to VDD plus VDD. From here, you take the <coughs> coupling capacitor and take to the load RL the voltage is V0, the current is I0 and for reasons that I had stated in the case of the common base amplifier, R2 must be bypassed. In other words, there must be a capacitor here C, C, G. C, G. Okay. There must be a capacitor here which bypasses R2 to ground, but R2 is effective in DC, in setting the DC operating point then your input is applied through a coupling capacitor and a source resistance RS and a voltage source VS and this goes to ground. All right, now things will get a little, little complicated because of RD, small r subscript small d. While it can be very easily ignored in a BJT, you have to be careful in an FET. As I said in the last uh, analysis, in the last example that we took, our, our figures were very rough because small RD was not negligible compared to the parallel combination of RD, RL and in series with R sigma. Okay, that makes me happy. Now, <laughs> let us see what the equivalent circuit is. We have RS, 
Vs, AC equivalent circuit. Then you have the source node from which you have an R sigma and this voltage is Vi. Okay. This comes to from the source from the drain to the source the gate is common gate is grounded from the drain to the source you have the GM VGS. What is VGS equal to? Minus Vi. Minus Vi. <coughs> is that clear? This is the gate G. So, VGS is from this point to this point which is of opposite polarity to Vi, but magnitude is the same. So, I can write this as minus G M V i. This is a simplification occurring immediately. And then you have this inevitable nuisance of R sub D, the drain, uh, the dynamic drain resistance. And from here you have the capital R D and capital R L. <coughs> this is V0 and this is I0. Okay. The things are not too bad as far as the equivalent circuit is concerned because there are only two nodes. Not only that, not only that since we are finding out the gain, gain is a relationship between V0 and Vi. You can write the node equation at D <laughs> in terms of Vi and V0, nothing else. As you can see, load equation at D is V0 GL, now I take conductances, it becomes uh, simpler to do it that way, GL plus GD plus okay, VL, GS, GL plus GD, then V0 minus Vi divided by R D. So, plus V 0 minus V i multiplied by small g subscript small d. Okay. This is the current through R D. Then I have this extra term minus G M V i. Okay. This is the node equation and the node equation contains only V 0 and V i. Why this? I have to add this current, this current, this current and this current this current is gm vgs which is minus gm vi okay so since this equation contains only v0 and vi it's very easy to find out the voltage gain and the expression is gd plus gm divided by gl plus g capital d plus small g subscript d and if rd could be ignored if it could be ignored wishful thinking it should have been approximately G m divided by G l plus G d. Do not you see that this is the same as G m R l parallel R d. Is this obvious? 1 by G l plus G d conductance is add. So, the two resistors are in parallel. This is also obvious from the equivalent circuit. Okay? Equivalent circuit never tells a lie if R d is ignored, if it is infinity, then this current has to flow through this and that is the voltage gain. It is only because of R d that we have to write a node equation at the node d, otherwise we do not have to. Okay. If a big if G d is much less compared to G m as well as <coughs> G l plus G d if this is true then this will be approximately the story. If you want to find out the input resistance, now the input resistance is also also complicated by the occurrence of R d okay, and the occurrence of G m minus G m V i. The input resistance is no longer R sigma, no. Okay. To find the input resistance all I need is the ratio of V i to I i okay. and therefore, what I can do is I can write a node equation at the node s. If I write that at the at the node s I i is coming 
GM VGS is coming, GM VGS is minus GM VI. This current will be going off VI by R sigma and current through RD which is V0 minus VI multiplied by GD. Okay. Now the complication is that in this node equation you have V0. But you know what is V0 by VI, you have already calculated V0 by VI and therefore it is not difficult. The equation that we get is if you see it is VI divided by R sigma is the current that is going minus this current leaves the current coming is GM VGS. So this is GM minus VI is the current generator plus VI minus V0 is the current going divided by RD okay divided by RD. Now what you do is you divide by VI then you get 1 by RI as equal to 1 by R sigma plus GM then plus GD minus GD times AV that is right. Now you substitute for AV and simplify. The expression that I get it is a bit of algebraic simplification not very uh, not very complicated you get 1 by Ri as equal to G sigma plus GL plus GD this requires a bit of algebraic simplification as I said GM plus GD divided by GL plus I hope I am right GD plus small GD that is what I get and once again if your wish comes true that is if small GD is negligible compared to GM and GL plus GD do not you see that this is simply G sigma plus GM agreed yes. which means that Ri is the parallel combination of R sigma and and what else? One by G M. Okay, let's let's see this. R i is approximately the parallel combination of R sigma and one by G M. In the example that we took, what was what was? I'm sorry. I made the mistake because someone looked back. Don't look back. R sigma parallel 1 by GM. Okay. What was R sigma in our example? 15K. And 1 by GM? 1 by 0.8K, which is 1.25K. Don't you see that R sigma is large compared to this? And therefore, this is approximately equal to 1 by GM. If you recall in the common base amplifier this was exactly the same story except that 1 by GM is now not as small as 25 ohms. In the previous case it was some 25, 24 or 25 ohms. This is now 1.25 k. This is the general story. All right. And finally, finally of course AI can be calculated from AV RI divided by RL. You find out the expression. But I can mention that under this condition small r subscript small d very large this is approximately r d divided by r d plus r l. So the gain is current gain is less than 1 it has to be in a common base case this was also true. As far as capital R0 is concerned the output resistance is approximately equal to Rd if small Rd goes to infinity. If this is not the case then I am afraid you have to calculate this from this equivalent circuit Rs R sigma Rd 
G M V G S. Where is V G S now? V G S occurs across R sigma and with what polarity? Minus up and plus down. Agreed? So this is V G S. This is G M V G S. It's not difficult to calculate. Then you have an R D and I zero and V zero. Please do carry out these calculations, okay, and find out what is R zero. How does R D affect? A check on this calculation would be that if you put R D equal to infinity, the value should be capital R D. That would be the check. And this is a good point to stop. Next time, that is Thursday, uh, we'll work out some problems, and we'll also look very briefly. At the common, what is remaining? Collect common drain, drain, not collector. Common drain FET amplifier. process of producing different components by plastic deformation of work material by passing it between rotating rolls. The process is called longitudinal rolling if the forming rolls are rotating in the opposite directions and flow of work material is along the length of the jaw and perpendicular to the central line of the rolls. By this process, we can produce products like bars of different cross sections, steel for constructional work. Flat products like plates and sheets of various thickness can also be produced by this process. Another version or type of rolling process is transverse rolling. Let us have a look at a transverse cold rolling machine. process the forming rolls are rotating in the same direction and the flow of material is either radial 